I have a price for Bitcoin, a very clear price. My price for selling some Bitcoin is when I can get a home on at least an acre of land. If I can trade half of Bitcoin or less for that, that is my price. When all of Starbucks says we prefer Bitcoin, not now accepting Bitcoin, but prefer Bitcoin, and you see that prominently displayed, it shows up in their app every time you go to order a coffee, at major gas station chains, at all of Walmart, on Amazon, right there, prominently displayed the very first payment option, Bitcoin preferred. If that happens, price is going to be probably a lot more than $100,000. I'm guessing it'd be somewhere in the range of $500,000. If anybody thinks that they can outplay the S&P or the massive institutions, they're delusional. Can you imagine when Bitcoin's $500,000, when it's a million dollars? Like, oh, that's cool. What is the dollar worth at that point? A handful of people that, that don't want their face seen, which I think is at least silly. Like, who are you, who are you hiding from? Me? What am I going to do? Robin? What's he going to do? Oh, are you hiding from the big brother? They already know who you are. He had written off the possibility of children. Like, it's hard enough for us to get by. We don't have a whole lot of extra income. Might be kind of dicey if we bring a child into the world. But once Bitcoin came along, it was like, hmm, maybe, maybe this actually could work. Hi, Del. How are you doing? Everything fine on your end? Yeah, it's good. Uh, where? What time is it where you're at? Is it afternoon, morning? Uh, it's uh, 9 p.m. in the night, so it's, it's getting okay. to, to the night time. What's your okay. What's your time? My uh, it's almost noon. The reason I asked is because you gave me a pretty big window, and I thought, well, when is he waking up, and when when is he going to bed? Because I knew, well, I assumed, I guess, that from your accent that you're not in the U.S., but there's people with all kinds of accents in the U.S. So, but I think you've mentioned that that you're 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 somewhere in the in in, in Europe. Yeah, Austria. Um, gotcha. Uh, some Americans, and maybe you can tell me also if, if you feel like that or not, because some people say to me that I sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I personally don't hear it because I don't hear it because maybe I'm Austrian, but I keep hearing it from uh, different people. I, I, I guess the accent is similar. I, I didn't, I, I, I can't place accents well enough to, to have said that. Your voice definitely isn't as gravelly or deep enough to be Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but you certainly sound more like him than I do. Can you hear that at least? <laughs> that, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> okay. Austrian speaking English will always, uh, probably always uh, um, be a little bit like, I think this, this is where it comes from because my audience is most in America mm -hmm. and I'm Austrian and there are not so many famous Austrian guys. Like there are, you, if you There's ask There's two it, main ones that have come to mind. Which ones? Like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Christoph Waltz, probably also. No, no, the other one would be Hitler. <laughs> He's pretty I, I, famous when it comes to Austrians. He, he, I got that too, actually. I I was once in Malta, and I made like the language vacation for like four weeks to learn English. Uh, and people, no, not like not people. One guy came up to me like, "Hey, man, I love you, but you really sound like Hitler." <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, I'm working on it. I'm not sure what I can do about that. Sorry. Uh, no, I wouldn't say you sound like it. I. I don't know. Gosh, I don't even know if I've ever heard Hitler speak. But when you're saying, "Oh, famous people from <laughs> from Austria," like yeah, well, they're, they're, yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's the whole like one bad apple. One bad apple can can really. I mean, he ruined that mustache. Let me tell you what. I don't know what any of this has to do with podcasting, but. I made a tweet not that long ago. I said, I really wish that Hitler would have worn a man bun because I hate that hairstyle. Nobody would have worn, wore a, had a man bun if Hitler had one. Can you imagine? Man bun in that that stash? Never again. Just nobody with a man bun. Never would have happened. The, oh, well, true. here we are. He ruined, he ruined the, the beard, this mustache. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's also interesting because um, the, the, the one guy can ruin so much uh, even though it's like his beard has n had nothing to do with what he actually is like, just because you you have the beard does not mean that you go ahead and and do all this negative stuff and all this bad stuff. So it's like interesting how they connect. Like, oh, you have the beard. Like, oh, are you are you a fan of him or like what, what's what's going on with you? Yeah, I don't, I've never once seen somebody with that mustache, but I I can imagine if you did they might go like no 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 i'm, I'm a charlie chaplin fan or I, I i i do impersonations of charlie chaplin it's like boy have you there's so many other people that you could do impersonations of have you considered trying anyone else makes me wonder is if there is there a look i'm trying to think of any unique look 
in big, and I mean, I mean, something that really stands out. Every if you want to get pedantic, every single u- human being on the planet has a unique look. <laughs> but is there anyone in Bitcoin that has a look or wears a shirt or something that could then go and do something so atrocious that nobody in Bitcoin that was aware of that person would go, "Oh, we're never wearing." whatever or doing that hairstyle or, or something like that I, I can't think of anybody that has something that is really identifiable with with them there's there's no hairstyle or something like sailor I, I, he's just a an, an elderly ish I mean, what is he 50 or 60 years old white guy with a general white look. like he doesn't have some sort of specific jacket or shirt or or anything the only person that i can think that has somewhat of a uniform is Peter McCormick, he's got that hat that says Azrat Mazad or something like that. I don't even know what it means. I think I've looked it up and it's just some random company. And I don't, I, I don't okay, has it mod or I don't, I don't know, but he wears that a lot. But that's the only thing that I can think of. I don't know. This is stupid. This is pointless. This has nothing to do with anything. You asked me what I or asked you what, what we wanted to talk about. And I said that um, I keep looking for an oh shit moment. And what I, I guess I can expand on that. I, I'm i under the impression that most people watch sailor interviews like yours or anyone's. It, or let me rephrase this. I'm under the impression that anybody watching a sailor interview is probably already in Bitcoin. I'm sure there are exceptions to that. You see the numbers that a sailor interview pulls. And so if it's an especially good one, or he makes an especially interesting or easy to grasp point, then almost certainly that point that he makes, that specific minute to five, whatever it is, will get clipped and then sent out to other people. I know that I have sent some very clips like that to my dad, like, oh, here he is explaining this thing. Here, here, check this out. And people are that are deep into Bitcoin that want to help other people, which I think is more common when you first get into Bitcoin and how long that phase lasts depends on the person. But you go, oh, I had such difficulty myself understanding this thing. And I had all these questions. Here is somebody that is far richer than me, which I think is what people pay to pay attention to first and foremost with Sailor. Look how wealthy he is. And look what he's doing with his money. If this super rich guy is doing this with his money, then maybe it's a really good idea for me to do it with my money too. I think that's what stands out first. And then secondary, but also quite important is, oh, and he can speak in a way that almost anybody can understand. There are certain people like Lynn Alden. I have no idea what she's saying 85% of the time. I I have no fucking clue what she's saying. I I have none. Absolutely none. Same with Luke Groman, uh, Joe uh, Colasari, um, who who else there's some of these macro people out there that i'm just like i have no idea what the future is in this and when the the yield swap and this and they're all just like nodding with each other there was a a chat that um natalie not natalie portman that'd be funny if she got into bitcoin uh natalie brunel had with uh uh preston pish i don't know what the, the gal's name is she's a she's a dentist or was a dentist she lives in hawaii with her husband who is also a dentist and they were trying to do some volunteer work over there and then um they had a special guest was a don't Troy, Troy. Maybe I can find it here as I, as I chat, but they got to a point where one of them was describing something uh, about the way they were talking about the price suppression or is the price suppression happening and how does this work and, and what's going on with, with the market and the futures and the, this, and, and, and it went completely over my head. I had no idea. It was uh Preston Pish, James Lavish, Dr. Susie Riley, and then they had a special guest of your Luke Groman. There we go. I had no idea what they were talking about most of the time. No idea. When Susie's there talking about trying to volunteer and do this. Oh, okay. I can understand those things. Those are words that I understand in my head. But when they're talking or James was there saying that these large institutions, the hedge funds, they, it's this thing that he did back in the day and they, they get 10% when they, they do the futures. And it, I have no idea. I have no idea. So the reason I went on this rabbit hole is because when Sailor doesn't speak that way 
And he goes, if you have three tuna sandwiches and Bob wants two tuna sandwiches, well, the price of the tuna sandwiches are going to go up. Most any idiot can go, well, I understand that. I don't really like tuna, but uh, yeah, that makes sense. And he speaks in a way that r- really you'd have to be borderline, uh, like, you know, not not well mentally to not understand what what Sailor is saying. And that's appealing. People like somebody that you can understand. But I take a lot of, mm, I was going to say hope. That's not the right word. I, I, um, I guess it helps me sleep better at night when there are people like James Lavish and Preston Pish and Luke Groman talking about these things in a way that, unless it's all a big act, but th- they certainly seem to know what they're talking about. They, they, they've, they've got the act down pat. And they all use the same vocabulary and they say the same things again and again and again in different places to different people that makes me go, okay, they're just, they they have seeped themselves in a world that I have not. And the same would be true of me not understanding a rocket scientist or a mechanic talking about working on the undercarriage of a Toyota Camry. He's going to be throwing around words and phrases and tools that I probably have never heard of. Some of it, I'm going to pick up little pieces like, oh, OK, I, I know what that I know what a wrench is. I know what he just described there, left turn, right handed left. I know what those things are. But then when he gets into the deep weeds of how the undercarriage fits to the chassis and then the muffler system, I'm I, sure I, I'm, I'm glad you know what you're talking about, because I'm going to have to take my car to a mechanic. So I, I hope he knows what he's doing. But I take it. It, it helps me that you have extremely smart people. Sure seems like it in the Bitcoin space, interested in Bitcoin, speaking positively about Bitcoin. And on the flip side, the people speaking positively about pretty much every other crypto are obvious morons, like clearly fucking retarded idiots. It starts with their profile pictures. It seems like 65, 80% of the time, it's a little cartoon something from some NFT that's a monkey this or a penguin or some anime something or another. So they're, I was about to say hiding behind a mask. And maybe it's not hiding. Maybe maybe they take pride in it and they, they're, they're more than happy to share a picture of themselves. But it seems as though the people in Bitcoin, there, there are people that have, that are anonymous or pseudonymous. But many people, I don't know, I don't know if I can say the majority, but at least the majority of the people that I follow use an actual picture of themselves. They actually go on. There's only a, a couple that I can think of in the Bitcoin space that don't put their face out there. You've got um, Gigi. You, you've got uh, Uncle Uncle okay. Dev. You've got the Rational Root, Satoshi. A few, a handful. Of people that that don't want their face seen, which I think is <laughs> really silly. Like, who are you? Who are you hiding from? Me? Like, what am I gonna do? Robin? What's he gonna? Do? <laughs> what the fuck do we care? Or, oh, are you hiding from the Big Brother? They already know who you are. You're not hiding from Big Brother. You're not hiding from the NSA or the CIA. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, I, 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 if it's fun for you, then oh, okay, oh yeah, that, then have fun. Like this, the, the the rational root guy, he went out and had a carrot mask made, and it's it's kind of like a DJ type thing. So he enjoys doing that. Great, Satoshi, I have an exceptionally low opinion of. I think he's a blithering fucking idiot with the, the way that he presents himself. But if he has fun, have fun. I I I like it when people have fun. I I like having fun. But that you don't have Sailor doing that, you don't have James Lavish or Lou Groman or so many of these other people, it makes me go, oh, okay. These are some smart people. This helps. And I started all this with Lynn Alden and not understanding what, what she's saying. And it doesn't really matter too much to me that I don't understand what she's saying. If I really put the effort to get deep into macroeconomic stuff, I think that I could understand it. But when Sailor comes along to bring this all back around to where I started and says something that any idiot can wrap his head around, then that gets shared. But the vast majority of people listening to Sailor are already in Bitcoin because I think, I think 
that most people that are into Bit deep into Bitcoin, not, oh, yeah, sure, I have some uh, Bitcoin and I have some Solana and I have some of this and I have some of the, the, this other one. And yeah, I've dabbled with NFTs. No, 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 not, not those people. I mean, the people that are go, oh, I've read multiple books. I've listened to dozens, if not hundreds of podcasts. I have a large section, if not the majority of my net worth in Bitcoin. I am deep, deep, deep in this thing. I think that the reason, because this, this, I'm basing this off of my own reason, that those people, like myself, I'm one of those people, listens to more and more of these podcasts is because we're wondering, am I an idiot? Am I not seeing something here? We see the people that fall for the hexagon scam. We see the people that fall for this or that get wrapped up in some pyramid scheme and we go, eh, eh. we're constantly taking a hard look in the mirror and going, is that, is that me? Is that what Bitcoin is? I, I don't think it is. I've looked at it. I've asked every hard question that I can think of. And every single one of them has an answer, which is weird. And I, I but m maybe, maybe I should just be trying to put more money into GameStop or, or NVIDIA. That's doing, that's clearly doing really well. Is AI the future? I don't know. I, and it seems like it's got some good stuff, but it also seems like it's got some really stupid stuff. And and we see all these examples coming out of Google that Google's doing horrible, really completely ass backward stuff with AI. So is that the future? I, I don't want to be a part of that future. So even if it is going to make me a lot of money, I'm not sure that I want to put my money into a company that's helping that. I don't I don't want to help further that outcome. So ah, I don't know, boy, what, where do I put my money? Because really, at the end of the day, I would just like to have some more time with my friends and family and not have to work every single hour of the day until I'm 90 years old and just die from exhaustion. Oh, we've seen the meme where the baby's born on the conveyor belt, blah, 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 da, 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 and dumped into the grave. Is that me? I don't want that to be, be me. And I'm hoping this Bitcoin thing allows that, allows me to escape that whole chain of things happening. But maybe it's just another piece of this crazy puzzle that we call life. I, I don't know. I have no idea. But here's Sailor, and he's making a lot of sense, and he's putting a shit ton of his money into this thing. Oh, boy, please help me think and realize that I'm not a moron. But for all that, and to my bringing this again back around to what I said to the tweet, I don't think that Sailor is going to be the one in a direct way that orange pills the world. And what I mean by in a direct way is Sailor's adoption, acceptance, et cetera, of Bitcoin, his push behind it, as easy to understand as he is, I don't think is going to make huge swaths of people just go click. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That This is something that I need to pay attention to. What I think will cause that click. Oh, oh, I think I, maybe I should at least maybe check this out is when all of Starbucks says ex prefer we prefer Bitcoin, not now accepting Bitcoin, but prefer Bitcoin. And you see that prominently displayed. It shows up in their app every time you go to order a coffee at a, at major gas station chains, at, at, at all of Walmart, at, on Amazon, right there, prominently displayed the very first payment option, Bitcoin preferred. If that happens, then people, you log into Amazon. Wait, I'm sorry. Is this a joke? What is, you, you, I thought that Bitcoin thing was, wait, really? But for it to get to that point, it wouldn't just happen overnight out of the blue. Oh, Jeff Bezos goes, hey, let's just do this. It, there's going to be steps that get there and it's going to be talked about. And the price is going to be probably a lot more than $100,000. I'm guessing it'd be at for that to happen somewhere in the range of 500000 and when then Apple is going like we preferred, 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 it, none of these things happen overnight. What is more likely to happen is that somebody like Michael Dell of Dell Computers is having a chat with Sailor in the background. That's why I say that I don't think what Sailor is doing is going to happen in a forward facing way. What I think is happening is that you have a billionaire probably having conversations. I, I have to assume that some people out there with huge amounts of sway like a Michael Dell, like Jeff Bezos is seeing what, 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 um, what sailor has done and going, it's at least worth paying attention to. I, let's, let's see what happens here. And is it worth mimicking at this point when Bitcoin can't seem to break past the, the 60 range and it, it tickled the bottom half of, of 70 for a little while? 
Maybe these large institutions, these big companies are waiting to see, hey, let's see what the nation states do, which is weird because usually you uh, private companies wouldn't wait for what a nation state was going to do. But maybe they, they want to see more favorable regulatory frameworks to go, well, OK, hey, if uh, if Qatar or these oil rich nations are going to start their their sign is going to be Bitcoin preferred. Well, then, yeah, maybe we should we should we should follow that. But when. It hasn't really done. Yeah, you could say, oh, well, over the past year, it's up more than 100 percent. All right, cool. Yeah, great. But it hasn't broken its all time high. You could say, yeah, yeah, it did. It was, last time around, it was at 69, whatever, 68,000. And, and it hit seven, what, 72, 73. All right. Yeah, but adjusted for inflation, I think people can feel in their gut, eh, it kind of did about the same thing. And it really, it really didn't. I think that it needs to break 80 for people to go, oh, okay. Well, now, now it's doing something interesting. Is that going to happen this year? I don't fucking know. I'm at the point in my Bitcoin cycle where I don't really care. I, I, my, my favorite phrase that I've come up with to describe Bitcoin is I am 100% convinced that our current monetary system is fucked beyond all repair. I, that, that I'm convinced of as much as I'm convinced that the sun will rise again tomorrow. And that if I were to sit on the sun, it wouldn't go well for me. Not, not a good outcome. That I'm convinced of. Monetary system screwed. I don't know if Bitcoin is the answer that fixes all this, but I don't know of something better. I don't think gold does it. I don't think silver does it. I don't think any of the other shit coins do it. I, I, I certainly don't see any government or many of them getting back onto a, a, a sound money standard. What, what Malay is doing in Argentina is kind of unheard of. I, you don't usually see somebody get into power and just start chopping agencies off left and right. I mean, that maybe a little bit. Oh, we're going to reduce the number here by 5%, but not just in all of it. These studies, this, this, what, what is just no more of this entire division. That's, that's wild. But I've been chatting for 20 minutes. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot uh, along the ways and uh, the, the the moment where i wanted to to scream out was when you said about lin on because i mm. always felt the same way mm. like i can listen to sailor for hours to jeff poof for hours to all those people for hours because i feel like i learned something and still i understand it if i listen to lin Alden for an hour i usually click out after like 10 minutes because i'm like i have I have no clue where we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have no clue what she's saying. Um, but it, it seems like, are you are you disappointed a little bit with, with, with Bitcoin or is, is Bitcoin not where you, you want it to be? No, I don't, I don't really care because like I said, I don't know what else I would be putting my money into. I, I need, so I guess I've, I've got in my mind, th there's a lot more options than, than this, but in my mind, there are three options that I can do with my money. And before I even learned about Bitcoin, there was only two options. And one of them was kind of, eh, I don't really understand that. So the first option is just saving. I just, I, I get a paycheck and I put some of that into my savings account. And I, and I try not to look at it when I check my, my account balance. I go, no, I, I don't really, I, I do have that. Yes, but that's for a rainy day. And, and, and the first time I ever do this, it's a hundred dollars. And then after, at the end of the year, maybe I, I get it up to 5,000 or $10,000 if I'm really doing well and, and not going with any frivolous expenses, saving $10,000 in a year for me and my income would be challenging, but probably doable if I was really, really frugal. Um, and so that's option one, just, just saving money. But that's difficult because you see this number getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And at least for me, when I see a monetary number getting bigger and bigger and bigger, I just go, oh, look at all the look at all the neat stuff that I can get. I can't turn that that part of me off. Maybe some people can. They go, oh, I really enjoy saving and I like seeing that number get bigger. And for me, not for me, but for the, the person I'm, I'm, I'm parroting here, that that's where I get enjoyment. But I, I have a spending problem. Maybe it's because I, I kind of grew up, I, I wouldn't say poor. There was always food on the table. But we, weren't, we were certainly on the, the lower end of, of a middle class household, for sure. I'm one of five children, so 
unless your your parents are making huge and I, my, my mom was a stay-at-home mom so i we were living off of one income which was possible back in even the 80s uh and into the 90s anyhow that's option one just save well that's hard option two is do something with your money and this is where safe dean talks about well now you have to have a, a day job but then also you've got to research all these various companies there's a thousand plus companies, 10,000 companies that you can invest in, which is the right one. I don't know. Do you? No, of course not. There's only seven or 10 that are profitable on the S&P 500, which is why people invest in the whole damn S&P 500. But why not just invest in the right ones? That would be even better, wouldn't it? Well, sure it would. But which are the right ones this year, this month? I don't know. I don't know. And if anybody thinks that they can outplay the S&P or the massive institutions, they're delusional or an, they're either a delusional, which is 99.9% of them, or an absolute genius and is probably doing something else with his time. But if you can beat the S&P 500, hey, Godspeed. But if the hedge funds and all these institutions, these massive players that have bajillions of dollars, okay, that's not a real number, but literal billions and in some cases trillions of dollars to throw around and they can't do it, <laughs> how are you going to do it? You're not. You don't have their infrastructure. You don't have their tools that, that, is, that this is the entirety of what they do. You're off doing your day job and you can listen to a podcast here and there on your commute. You're going to outplay them? No, you're not. No, you are not. This is like you saying, oh, I am going to load up my Glock, click, click, and I'm going to go and solve the war in Ukraine and Russia. I'm going to do it. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. You'll go over there if you can even get over there and you will die. That's the first thing that will happen. You'll get out to the front line and a drone will smack you in the head with a bomb strapped to it and you're dead. And now maybe if you're lucky, you're a Twitter video. It, and that's how people remember you. The guy that was a fucking moron that went on and took on a, a, a massive war and died. That was you. Good job. You took on the hedge funds and the Institute and Citadel and BlackRock and, and you have zero dollars now. And there's all sorts of these stories on Wall Street bets where people are like, oh, I YOLO'd into this life savings. Grandma left me ten thousand dollars. I'm going to put it in one, two, three stock. And now you have no dollars. Good job. Or you owe them money because you did some really cute stuff with futures and shorts and things that, well, I don't understand it. And I'm not the biggest retard on the planet. And these people that are on Reddit, well, you're on Reddit, so you're you're a bigger retard than I am. And, and you did what with your money? Oh, okay. Yeah, you deserve to have zero dollars or negative dollars. And then the last thing is, once you find out about it, Bitcoin or some other crypto, I guess. I guess there's gold and stocks in there, but that, that, that all plays into that second point of which is the right thing to put your money into. And so am I concerned? This is a long fucking answer, but am I concerned or, or bothered with what, what Bitcoin is doing? No, because I don't know what else I would do with it. And the nice thing about Bitcoin is that once you get to a deep understanding of it or deep enough, whatever enough means there, you just sit on it and forget about it. And because it's in cold storage, at least for me, it's a hell of a lot harder to spend. I can't just go tap, tap, transfer from savings into checking. Now I'm on, I went to the gun store and bleep, bloop, bloop. I bought myself a new rifle. There, that, well, oof. There goes my $10,000 savings. Well, whoopsie do. Uh, uh, great. I, I, I can't do that. I'd have to go boot up the, my specific computer that is only used for Sparrow. It's never gone online for anything ever. That's the only program it has on it. I have to boot that up, type in my password to get into Sparrow, see which of my wallets, well, I guess it'd be the only one on there, I'd have to then transfer that money using my multi-sig thing. So I've got to go and dig out multiple wallets, at least two of them, or cold, the, the signing devices that, that I've got. Send some of that Bitcoin to something like Cash App or some other river or something like that. Then sell that, all the while knowing what I'm doing every step of the way that I'm about to do this. And what are you doing? What are you doing? Having this little voice going, what are you doing? What, do, dude, what are you, what are you doing? And knowing that I'm going to take a hit for capital gains, I'm going to have to pay on this. Like It's so much more of a headache to get that money and turn it into USD, which I'm glad about. Some people are like, see, look, that's a terrible thing about Bitcoin. No, no, that's a really good thing as far as I'm concerned with Bitcoin. It makes it much harder for me to just spend it willy nilly. And so I'm glad that I just sit on it and forget about it. And even where it's at right now, I'm up more than 
more than 2x because when I got into it was, at least in this last cycle, the best time that I could have. I got in when it was down into the 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 like the very bottom, the the 15 to 20 range is where I was getting in because I was paying attention to it right about that time. I was like, all right, well, I've seen that it's gone down. And one thing that I'd learned from listening to all sorts of different investing things before I got into Bitcoin was like I started getting to investing and learning about it with the GameStop thing. But I saw that when I was at the top and I had at, less, at least uh, enough wherewithal to go, well, if everybody else is in it already, then I missed the boat. I, I can at least know that. And I, I certainly had, because by the time that I was even paying attention about it or hearing about, hearing about it, it was at the 200 range. And yeah, it went up to about 300, but then it's just been down ever since. So I'm, I, didn't, I didn't get that one, and I'm glad I didn't get on that boat. Um, but it led me down leading to learn about Bitcoin. And then, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Shoot, I was doing pretty well there too. Uh, I'm I'm super impressed. Uh, by the way, I the, the last podcast I, I can't you kind of remind me of the guys one. Mm. Uh, the guys one I also had on, and 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 he is just this amazing drain of thoughts where he <laughs> like gets back to his original point, but he makes this like small adventures along the way <laughs> and it's really interesting to to hear it and I, I love how you do it uh and 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 really cool hmm i was talking about oh sell, selling some bitcoin and doing that and that'd be a big pain in the butt uh i think it was and, going and so. you were talking about that uh the third option with bitcoin it's way harder to get uh to your bitcoin and that's how you prevent yourself basically to to spend it and and that's how you say it and also i never thought about that but uh, it's, it's also pain in the ass for me to get my, uh, actual stack of Bitcoin because I have some like in, in a hot wallet, I have some really small portion in like a lightning wallet and something like that. But like 99.999% of my Bitcoin stack is really hard reachable, even for me. Like, yeah. uh, good luck for anyone else to, to get it. But for, <laughs> for me personally, it's, it's, it's really hard. Uh, I have to do something for that. Uh, and, uh, I don't consider that number to be my net worth and when i go on and uh look for like oh i could buy that and then i look at my bank account i'm like oh i cannot buy that mm, yeah <laughs> i cannot yeah uh, uh, i could buy that maybe when i sell all my bitcoin but it's not even in my question like it's like and of course i don't sell my bitcoin it's not even i need, don't even think about touching my bitcoin because there's a barrier and i'm so aware of 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 that asset. And my, my question in my mind was like, why aren't more people figuring that out? Or maybe it, maybe it's even good that, uh, Bitcoin takes a while to understand. Um, I'll, I'll come to my thought on that here in a second. Cause I remembered where I was going. So I was saying about when I got into Bitcoin and that it was down and it's been up since then. So I feel pretty good that it's at 60 considering I got in, in the 15 to 20 range and I'm, I, attribute getting in then after it gone down i imagine some people that th you'd see, see that meme it's like oh it's at 60 60 000. i'm not buying that's too expensive and then it drops down to 30 it's like well i'm not buying it just dropped down to 30 i'm not buying it. It's, it's, it's why would i buy it if it dropped down but i had watched enough podcasts with traditional investors like bill ackman where i learned two important things there never make investments with emotions and buy when it's something is down. And so once I had what I felt was a decent understanding of Bitcoin, I thought, Ooh, oh, this thing's on sale. It's down from the, the all time highs that it was at at 68,000 down to 15, 20 now. Hell yeah, we're scooping some of this up. Oh, heck yeah. Maybe it'll go lower, whatever. This is a great bargain from where it was. And that turned out to be exactly accurate. And I think will turn out to be astoundingly accurate. And I think where it's at now will be an absolute brain numbing bargain compared to where it many people foresee it going in the not so distant future. But as to why more people don't see it, I don't think they have the time. I do not think they have the time. If you are on Bitcoin Twitter, then yes, much of your Twitter feed will look like there's so many people in Bitcoin and there's a lot of people that are in this thing together with me. But that is an absolute minuscule drop in the bucket of all of Twitter. If you step outside that for a second and you look at what's trending, go to YouTube trending, millions, billions of more people are paying attention to anything other than Bitcoin. They're paying attention to anything other than finances. 
And even though there are these TikTok videos that pop up of some person in their car yelling about how I can't afford this and uh, the politicians don't understand the working, man, it's still one video for 10,000 whatever bullshit is happening this time or oh look guys i got the new mick cafe swirl topper oh my there's so much more of that bullshit out there and unless things get really bad super bad like oh i don't have any money because a company it says in my bank account stolen from you by bad company lately literally says that as a transaction oh well, now i have a reason to get upset until that happens to millions of people across this country or billion billions across the world it'll just be the frog in the pot slowly boiling and uh, yeah well some people complain about it and somebody will make a video and oh i agree with that guy and no back to my day to day it's very similar to <laughs> i don't know what happened to my twitter feed but my Twitter feed has turned into an absolute fucking dumpster fire. And no matter how many times I tell it, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Not interested in this. And it says, okay, we'll show you less of that. It doesn't show me less of that. And I have, for whatever reason, gotten shoved into this corner where the most insane conspiracy theories or ideas are out there. I'm like, it's giving me all of the flat earth stuff. It's giving me Holocaust didn't happen. It's giving me Hitler was a good guy. It's just the most crazy nonsense. And I don't know how it happened because for a little while there, it was great. It was really good. It was primarily Bitcoin people uh, talking about stuff. It was a, 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 a the occasional model, like an attractive woman. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of that. It was, so it was rel some neat uh, outdoor photography from different photographers. Oh, that's cool. I like seeing neat places. So it was, it was, it was a nice, good feed. But it has turned into such garbage. And that's, God damn it, it happened again. But that's so much, I, I lost my spot. But that is so much of what people are inundated with that I don't think that people have the time or wherewithal or even care to go and look into Bitcoin. And I do think that Bitcoin is simple enough for pretty much anybody to understand if you spend the time to I, my, my advice is always go and just listen to uh, Save Dean Amos's The Bitcoin Standard. You can listen to it on YouTube. It's on there. It's 11 hours. So if you play it in 2x speed, one and a half speed, you're going to be through it in, in less than that time, six to eight hours or so. Do that. And if that doesn't have you at least going, maybe I should get 100 bucks, 100 bucks worth of this thing, then I don't know what will. Because most people, myself included, had no idea have no idea i had no idea how money works or what why it matters why it's important and once you do understand that it's basically it's not basically it's it's a system that a small group of people have a monopoly on counterfeiting and they can legally counterfeit it and you can't then you start to go oh that seems like a pretty bad system <laughs> i wonder if there's something else out there oh there is there is there's there's there is one other thing out there that is that can't be manipulated in that way. Thank you. You already made it halfway through the video and I'm really, really grateful to have you here. Two things make this channel possible. You as a watcher and listener who keep supporting this channel. And another one is all the Bitcoin brands that I partner up with, like 21 Bitcoin, who support me from the very start and where I personally buy my Bitcoin from. With Code Robin, you even get a discount when you buy Bitcoin with them. And now also Bitbox. Bitbox is the simplest and securest way to secure your Bitcoin. And I heard a crazy statistics. Only 2% of Bitcoiners hold their Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. How crazy is that? Don't be in that 98% bracket. Be in the 2% bracket. And if you have self-custody and you know your friend does not have, maybe he needs a Christmas present. Maybe he needs a birthday present. And a small life hack, if you use code ROBIN, you get 5% off your order plus you support my channel. And now let's get back to the video. Uh, by the way, for Twitter, I'll also see that with my feed um i see more and more people making their own lists because you can add like a list to mm. your uh instead of your for you or following tab you can make a list and i also have this like i have like i think three different bitcoin lists with like 150 and 120 people each on 
And I really enjoy that once I like do this and every time when I see someone new, I add them to my list uh, and it's, it's a way cleaner thing. And I also see it with other people because other people like add me to their, uh, oh, Bitcoin clean list or mm. Bitcoin podcaster list or Bitcoin that, that list. So I, I see that getting more and more to a trend, like when, when Elon Musk took over, uh, more and more this list thing came, came along. I mean, he makes even uh advertisement for that like uh go go on your for you page it's really good he always says but he's like you can also create your own uh list uh, i i i heard it two three times on a podcast with him okay um, i'll have to it, check that it, out it, it, it's really cool um but it's extra work uh and it's it's a pain in the back that uh twitter just does not like the, the feed is weird and uh, yeah i also got that like i i, I see some some uh, some things where I'm like, why do I see that? Like, what, what's, uh, like I see now pop things where mm. like, oh, those are the eight best pop culture things that happened mm. this year. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. What have definitely. I ever done that makes you think I care about this? I don't, why is this happening? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, what, what you said is interesting because I also feel like that, um, and I, maybe I misinterpreted, but do you also feel that the, the pain is just not big enough because you also thought of, uh, said about that frog and interesting mm. about that frog example i actually researched a little bit about that because i always felt like there's actually a possibility that the frog is not jumping out of the water but at some point when you turn up the heat of the the water the, the frog actually jumps out of the water at least what i what i saw of, of, of some research that i did um so I feel like we're just at the point where the water is not hot enough for the frog to actually jump out and discover it. When I talk with people there, I, I, I talked yesterday with another podcaster outside of Bitcoin because I was in a podcasting studio in, in Vienna and he's like, yeah, I have faith in my, in, in our financial system and my, and I like it. It's a, it's a good system because they're just in a, in a cozy world. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of times when people hear the frog and pot analogy, they hear the pot and the water in it being bad system and the frog being the people. But that isn't how it works. There's a lot of pots with a lot of frogs or the pot is really big and the heat source is in a few different places so that the water temperature is not, I know the transfer of heat would move pretty quick through water, but whatever, there's, there's, there's partitions to the water where maybe it's really hot over here for one frog and he's ready to jump out. But this frog over here has a really high heat tolerance, so he doesn't even notice. It's actually really cozy to him. There's different kinds of frogs. This one is a is a tropical frog. And so he likes the warm. And this is a, this is a, not that this is a thing, but this is an Arctic frog. And so it, it, this is unbearable. This is, it's already too, it's like Mr. Freeze. It, a degree above freezing is too much for him. So it's a lot of frogs and a lot of different types of water. So your point of jumping out of the water and going, hmm, I need to look for a different solution was something, but it wasn't the same as it was for me. It wasn't the same as it was for Sailor. I don't have Sailor's concerns. I don't have a multi-million dollar company that I need to do something with all this cash with. And so I don't think that there is a point ever, 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 period. I, I mean that ever where all of the frogs jump out of the water because you have to remember that the water is also being controlled by somebody. There are politicians and they are part of the system too. So if it got so bad because of the policies that they're making, they're sitting there signing into law. And when I go outside, anybody with a baseball bat can hit me in the head with it. Yes, I signed that. Wait a second. What did I just sign? That seems like a really bad idea. They're part of the system too. And so they have to live in this. And yeah, sure, they're going to do things that are more favorable to them, but people die and politicians go away and the new ones come in. So it's a constant changing fractal. Have you ever watched a video where you see the Mandelbrot fractal videos that on, 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 on YouTube and it just goes and just goes and goes and goes and goes and it seems like this never ending thing. Try and guess where it's going to be in 10 seconds from wherever you are. Just, just tell me exactly what that pattern is going to look like. What is it? What shape is going to be where, what are the colors going to be? If you can do that a thousand times in a row, well, okay, maybe I'll start paying attention to you when it comes to financial advice or what the world's going to do. This is why I don't adhere to, and I think that <laughs> the whole fourth turning thing, I think it's such bullshit. I think all of that is such fucking 
nonsense that some guys were like, oh, look, let's cherry pick a bunch of different things from different per- points in time and call it the fourth turning. And look, you can go around. I am willing to bet a thousand dollars. Seriously, a thousand dollars that if you wanted, you could call something the six ways and you could go back from different points in time and look every six years this happens and if you find the right things and you pinpoint these various things it's gonna look exactly like the six ways and we are now in the fifth way and as you can see because of this next presidential election there are two old men both running for office which happened six times six years ago six 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 mark of the beast Obviously, we're in the six ways. And when we're in the sixth of the six ways, then it all loops back around to the first of the six ways. Fuck you. Fuck you. None of that makes sense. It's all bullshit. It's some guy's like, oh, I, he woke up one night from a nap. I'm making this up. And he's like, well, I bet I could sell a book. Yeah. Or maybe watch something. He's like, that seems kind of familiar. And oh, I, I wonder if I go and pull on this thread. If I can make something from this. And he did. And then he sold a whole lot of books. And then people are like, look, we can map the entirety of our existence onto this idea, this model. No, you can't. No, you can't. You can't do that with anything. Give me a break. You can't figure out what's going to happen a week from now with you, let alone the whole world. You have no idea where you're going to be in a week from now. You might have a general idea of, yeah, I'll probably be here and I'll probably be this. But do you know? What conversations you're going to have with your girlfriend or if your wife's going to go or your, your mom or your dad. Like, no, you don't. That's what makes life so beautiful is that you have no fucking idea. So when people come up with their models about this and that and yeah, I see that Bitcoin's done the same sort of thing for a few different cycles. But is that going to happen again? I don't know. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I, I, I you know. That's, I think that's kind of where I was going with the whole my Twitter feed being an absolute garbage fest is I, I, I had I, I did a little mental experiment with my wife. And I, I so I said, let's just assume just for a second that all of them, all of the conspiracies are real. There was no moon landing. The Twin Towers, it was all an inside job. Just all of it. Just the craziest ones. President Biden is an actual a literal lizard wearing some sort of uh, uh men in black skin suit like all of them all all every single one and and what how does that change my life do i not go to work tomorrow to to get food to pay for rent no i still have to do that well okay so that doesn't change do i not love my wife anymore because i know that there's an arctic ring of ice around the whole flat disc no no i I still love my wife yeah if i put my hand in a fire it, it, does it not burn anymore? Do, have I awakened to the true mysteries of life and I've, I've broken the code? Nope, nope. Fire still fucking hurts. Okay, so nothing changes for me. Yep, nope, nothing changes. Nothing changes. So what are all these people doing? They're, they're bored. They're lonely people and they need hobbies and hobbies are good and that's good that you have friends and you found some other weird friends and that's great. Do your weird stuff. But it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean a fucking thing. And so when people go around saying this is going to, no, 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 the frogs aren't going to jump out of the water because there's too many frogs. There's different frogs and there's new frogs being born every single day. And those frogs have different ideas. Life is this constant expanding fractal. And if you try and go, it happens this way, it works like this. (laughs) You're in for a world of pain, buddy, because that's not how it works. That's not how anything works. That's not how life works. And if you haven't figured that out by now and you think that you've got it, uh, all right, have fun with that. I, I don't I don't know what benefit that is. But if you've got it, why are you running around trying to convince everybody else that you've got it? Shouldn't you be in a state of absolute abject peace and bliss because you have found it? Doesn't seem like you found it if you're trying to convince other people, because if you did find it, then you wouldn't need to convince other people because you would just be off in this path of enlightenment. The Buddha, the Jesus is. But no, no, you're questioning, which is why you're going around talking about it, spamming stuff on YouTube, spamming things on Twitter is because you need the validation or you want the money. And oh, look at that. You're just trying to get engagement because you want more followers to make more money because you you, you have to what, you have to pay bills. You've got to put food on your table, just like everybody else ever for all of time. And that's just how it works. And that's how it's going to keep on working. 
in different forms in different ways and different factors and different new things and it's just going to change it'll be a little bit different but it won't be so different that you can't wrap your head around it it'll be a different enough where you're like well this is new and it's kind of different but it it'll it'll just keep on changing and that's life and that's why or one of the reasons that I like bitcoin because it doesn't change it is that ruler that we can go oh look there's 21 million of it now if blackrock comes along and something drastically so if there is some crazy change to bitcoin on a big way where it does break where blackrock comes in and convinces enough miners enough pools to do something that does fundamentally change bitcoin then i'll go all right all right well i guess it was a fun experiment i always knew that there was a chance that things would go tits up i still know that i i don't know how it happens and i don't think it does i really don't but is there a non-zero chance that something really negative happens to Bitcoin? Of course there is. Yeah, it's not impervious to anything. It's still a system. It, it, it does need human intervention and there are AI coming around. Like, I don't know what the future holds. I just spent 20 minutes saying that very fucking thing. So if I'm sitting here going, no, this is Bitcoin and it will always work and it's completely flawless and there's zero chance and you will never, ever lose your money. It would only ever go up. Well, if that was actually the case, if that was a fundamental law of reality, then everybody would be on a Bitcoin standard already. But there are questions and there are unknowns and there are other factors at play here. And here we are living the day today as best we can. And does Bitcoin play into that? It does in some way, in a positive way, it does for me, for everyone else remains to be seen uh, that was uh, again really really cool um when you said like uh, we always have this thing that we don't change bitcoin and it's a, a thing that i also really like that bitcoin is predictable mm -hmm. uh, and and we have a not a lot of things in, in our life that are really predictable uh and even bitcoin to some extent is not predictable because there are so much things are happening with it but the fundamental thing is predictable uh, the price, the s symptoms, the news uh, on top of that, the, all the, the, f the fear and the drama <laughs> around the ecosystem, that's not predictable. Um, but we always have to saying like, Bitcoin doesn't change, but you change yeah. when you discover yeah. Bitcoin. And you said you, you got in Bitcoin when it was like 15,000, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not that long ago. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. still a time ago, but not that long ago when we see it, the, the history of Bitcoin. Did did something change in your thinking when when you discovered uh, Bitcoin or since you discovered Bitcoin? Yeah, a lot of things. I the main thing was that I didn't have a whole lot of hope for the future for for myself. Like I I figured the world wouldn't change all that much, but I I saw the writing on the wall and I could feel it more than I could articulate that that money was broken. I and, and I I didn't know that. I would just I would notice things like. Boy, I remember back when I was a kid, I could get those little cheap packets of ramen. I don't know that I ever purchased them, but I, I, I remember going shopping with my mom and you could get a pack of 10 of them for a dollar. They were 10 cents a piece. I, I clearly remember that or n not all the time would they be. But if they were on sale, like if there was a special deal that they were having, I, I knew I would remember that. I'm like, oh, mom, hey, look, can we get more ramen? Because like I mentioned earlier, we weren't exactly rich. And so I was I would look for. I was money conscious without understanding what money was because my mom would bring coupons and, and she would look for deals. And so I would, as a child, be like, oh, I, I want to help out. Here's a deal on a thing that I like, this ramen. I really like the ramen. So here it is. It's a dollar for 10. I'm like, oh, yeah, girl. Okay, okay, good. That's a good deal. Grab them. Or or tuna. I like I really like tuna salad. I still do. I always have. And so back then you could get a can of albacore tuna for a dollar. Again, 10, 10 for 10 was a thing. That's unheard of now. You're looking at... 250 if it's a really good deal maybe three bucks which is interesting because that means and i'll get to what was changed for me here real quick but i'm talking about kind of the, the gut feeling that i did it, 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 why is this happening when uh, prices dollars are buying less but um i, I was at mcdonald's I, I like mcdonald's coffee it's really the only thing that i get there but i have if you use the app you can get where i'm at anyways a, a big coffee like this for a dollar that's an unbeatable deal for a coffee. Um, and there was a person in front of me. This just happened last night. Was a person in front of me in line. And I'm sorry, he was behind me. I'd gone through. I was waiting. He was behind me. I could hear him on, on, on the loudspeaker. The, oh, welcome to McDonald's. How can I help you? And he goes, oh, yeah. Going to get two McChickens and a McDouble. And I worked at McDonald's when I was 15, 16. And I thought, oh, that was three bucks back then. And I so I think this all real quick. That was three bucks back when I worked there because it was on the dollar menu. 
and I hear the person say, oh, sure, we've got uh, repeats the order back to them. And I, I, I think, I don't, how, how much is that going to be? It'll be $9.32. I'm like, oh, God damn. It's gone up three times. And that made me wonder, has the dollar lost 60% of its value in the last 20-ish odd years? Seems so, given what I see with with ramen and and uh, with with tuna. And like I just mentioned, you could get it back in the day for a dollar a can, and now it's two fifty three. So it does seem like it's lost about 60%. That's brutal. But that I couldn't tell you why. I just like, something's happening here. My dollar's buying less stuff. What the hell? How is my dad able to, on one income, afford a home, a whole home, an actual home on a nearly an acre of land with five children and be the only person bringing in money? How, do, how do, with two cars and a motorcycle, how did, how the, what in the fuck? How did that happen? Could I, I can't do that. There's nowhere, it, it, at least in this country that I can do that. And so once I found Bitcoin and started seeing, oh, what it is, it, it, it gave me hope for the future in a way where my wife and I had never, or not never, but we had written off the possibility of children. We're like, it's hard enough for us to get by and, and make the day to day. And, and I, it's not hard. It's not like we're on the streets. It's just we don't have a whole lot of extra income. So how in the world are we going to have a child? And we don't we didn't we have never wanted to bring a child into the world if we couldn't at least provide something. I, I'm not trying to go on vacation every year and all, uh, the best private school. It's just just a, a decent lifestyle that keeps the child off the streets out of a tent or a cardboard box. Can we do that? I, I don't know. It might be kind of dicey if we bring a child into the world. But once Bitcoin came along and I realized what it was and started saving in it and saw net worth go up, I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe this actually could work. And so we've talked about having a child. And yeah, so it, cha it cho totally changed my outlook on that. And just a little quick side note. I, I have a price for Bitcoin, a very clear price. There's some people that say oh, never sell, and as soon as you sell, you'll you'll regret regret that you've that you've sold some. All right, well, I I don't agree. I have made some purchases with Bitcoin, and I don't regret those at all. I've gone to the the Bitcoin company, the, the where you can buy gift cards and stuff, and I've made some purchases through that for various things. And usually, I just buy the Bitcoin back, so I'm not really. And I guess I'm kind of using fiat, but I'm getting a little bit of a kickback with the Bitcoin, whatever. But I don't, I don't. I haven't regretted any of those, and I'm talking small, like a, a couple hundred dollars, a couple hundred, a couple hundred there. But my price for selling some Bitcoin is when I can get a home on at least an acre of land. That's that's what I want. I basically want the the childhood home that I grew up in, something reminiscent of that, and not not the same place. I don't want to live in Arizona again. I don't think. But that 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 size, and if I can trade half or less a Bitcoin for that. I don't care if Bitcoin goes up a, a thousand times from where it was because I can't live and play on Bitcoin. <laughs> it, it's, it's digital. I can't do that. And so I could raise a family. I could play in the yard with a child or children at a home. And so if I can trade half of Bitcoin or less for that, that is my price. Now, I don't want to trade the entirety of my stack for that, but that that's my price in my mind of what I'm willing to separate. And I think I imagine most people do have that price. And if they don't, I, that's, I don't know, that that's kind of odd to me as well. I was like, well, but what, what are you doing this for then? If you're just, I just want to get as big a stack as I can. Well, <laughs> you've already lost that. It's like you, there's other people that beat you. No, no, I want my own personal stack to get bigger and bigger. I want to see that my stats number grow up. Well, okay. That's an interesting game. Have, all right. Do you, do you have a number? You don't have to share what it is, but do you, is it? Do you have like a, a thing that you want that you're doing this for? Or is it just, oh, I just want to stack for stacking? Mm -hmm. I have an interesting framework to think about. Uh, for me, is freedom. Uh, the thing, maybe I'm too young to think of family right now mm -hmm. uh, because I'm only 25. Okay. Uh, and I do have a committed uh, relationship with, with a girlfriend. With, with uh, I was like even right now over one year. But like having kids buying a big house, staying at one location, all this stuff, it seems a little far off for me mm. right now. Um, but it comes closer and closer. Um, but I have a framework where I'm like, how long can I live off my Bitcoin stack? Mm. Okay. Like I calculate the thing, like how, 
How long could I do absolutely nothing, lay in the bed, watch Netflix the rest of my life? How, lo how long is that period time where I can just do nothing yeah. and still survive, still get to a restaurant, still drive around with a car or something like that? Mm. Um, and I would never do nothing because I'm extremely like, if I'm on a two day holidays, on the second day I get nervous, I want to do something. <laughs> Um, but still, I want to have this kind of a freedom um, where I, every once in a while, look at my Bitcoin stack, look at the cost of living, look at how long could I do it now. Mm -hmm. uh, and when this year number um, exceeds the years that I possibly can probably live, mm. uh, then this is kind of my framework where i'm like okay this is a number where i'm really satisfied I see. it's really hard to predict in in dollar terms what it is yeah um because you don't know like how does the dollar develop how does bitcoin develop but that's how i try to think about it yeah i'm glad you mentioned that about how the dollar develops and what does that mean because that is something that i rarely hear people mention they're like oh I can't wait until Bitcoin is like, can you imagine when Bitcoin's $500,000, when it's a million dollars? Like, oh, that's cool. What is the dollar worth at that point? Because unless people are accepting, widely accepting Bitcoin, which I don't think is going to happen for a long time. I really don't think that the Starbucks sign and the Apple and the Amazon now, Bitcoin now preferred. I don't think that's happening for a long, long time. And maybe it'll be, maybe I'm wrong. I, I have no idea. I just, I don't know. Hmm. I think it'll remain more like Sailor talks about it, digital property, an asset that you, that you trade, that you do things with, that you sell when you want to, that'll remain like the most liquid property real estate that exists. But so many people don't talk about, oh, if Bitcoin is worth a million dollars, yeah, but your burgers are $15. I've seen people be like, oh, a burger's $1,000. I no burger's not going to be $1,000 at that point, but it might be 18, I guess if you go to some restaurants now, a burger already is $15. So it might be $50. It might, it might be $45. It might be a lot more. But I just watched a video. It's, I think the the um, the channel has got like 4,000. No, I'm sorry, not 4,000, a lot more than that. 4 million subscribers. I think it's called Casually Explained. And he went through Bitcoin and he's talking about it. And it, it, it's, it's amusing. It's supposed to be kind of funny, tongue-in-cheek stuff. And he's, so he... He's not disingenuous, but he also is because the point is to be amusing and funny. And he's trying to make jokes and he's trying to make you laugh. I've, I'd never seen the, the channel before, but it popped up in my feed on YouTube. I'm like, oh, Bitcoin explained. And so I watched it and he, he mostly gets it right. He gets a general idea of what Bitcoin is and how it's going to work. But at one point he talks about the price and says that it's never going to go to zero dollars because there's a guy on Reddit that will buy all 21 million coins for a penny a piece. Okay. True. And then he also says, but it's not going to go to $10 million either, because that would mean that the market cap was something like $400 trillion. And I thought, well, that actually is more likely to happen, the $10 million than the penny. And it's more likely to happen because of money printing. And that's something that so few people outside of the Bitcoin space know about. They don't understand why the prices go up. I, I And I know that most people don't know this because the retail job that I have, I work at a hardware store. And since COVID, there has not been a day, truly a day on average, I guess I should say, where I have worked and nobody has mentioned prices increasing every single day. Sometimes it's three times in a day. Sometimes it's 10 times in a day. Sometimes it's one time. I mean, sometimes it's zero. But on average, it's at least a couple times a day that somebody goes, man, prices have gone up. Or they come up and they buy a, a box of screws and they go, man, I remember when these were $5.99. They're, they're $12.99. What the hell happened? It's all it's some comment like that. And it's usually not like an attack on us. They know that we're not raising prices arbitrarily. They're just like, man, what, what is going on? I, I bought a burger the other day and it was 10 bucks. I remember when I could get a, a whole meal on lunch for 5 bucks. What the heck's going on? And often I will say, well, that's what happens when you print more money in the past couple of years than maybe ever before. Or I'll say something like, that's what happens when a trillion dollars is being added to the balance sheet every hundred days. And people just go, well, huh? Nobody I say this to. Okay, not nobody, but very few people go, yeah, you're right. Almost every single one of them is like, what are you, what is that? What are you, what are you talking about? I thought prices just went up. 
every once in a while, somebody be like, you're exactly right. And we'll have a little chat and they're like, you know what we need to do? And we got to get back. And they're like, have you ever checked out the website? I've grown into this a couple of times. What happened in what the fuck happened in 1971? I, I sure have. I know that website real damn well. But that number of people is one out of 30. It is not common. It is not common that anybody has even an inkling of what's going on. It's just like prices go up. I have less money. Oh, this sucks. That's back to what I was saying about the frog. It's just like, I was, it's getting worse, I guess. I'm, I'm, I'm back to work for me. Whatever. Um, yeah. It, that would have been really interesting uh, video going out in the street asking like 200 people, why do prices rise? Yeah. It would be interesting answers, I feel like, and and uh, probably two correct ones. <laughs> God, I got into it one time with this guy that came out. He's, he's like, oh, man, just I said he said something about the prices and I made a comment about the, the trillion dollars or the or more money printing, something like this to kind of like, I, I guess I kind of do that to sort of test the waters. Like, hey, do you know why this is happening? And I have an inkling. I, I, I can't explain it in great detail, but I do know that when you print more of a thing, then thing goes down in value and he's like yeah well it's actually greedy corporations and i was just like i it pissed me off i said no it's not it has absolutely nothing to do with greedy corporations they don't want to raise prices we don't want to raise prices there are some exceptions to that like that stupid brand supreme yes they put a really high price on their on their silly t-shirts and their the bricks that they sell or whatever but most places want to sell their product and if you want to sell your product you don't raise the price a whole shit ton. You find how, what is the margin that we need to make here? And depending on the product to get it into people's hands, because you have some other idea, you're going to lose money. Oftentimes when video game consoles are first to release, they lose money on those, but they make money in the long run because of the digital sales and the, this and then that and the, the, all this other stuff. But greedy corporations are not, it just pissed me off when the guy said that. And because I shot back at him, and because I work in a mom and pop hardware store, I can say pretty much whatever the fuck I want to anyone I want any time I want. And I, the boss, the owners will just chuckle. I, I've gotten heated with customers. And they're just like, oh, I, was, I, I took a guy down. I have a video of it. A shoplifter came in. I, I know some jujitsu. I jumped on his back and had him in a, a rear naked choke. You can't do that at most places. <laughs> you can do that where I work. They were happy that I did that. Anyhow, um, yeah, it pissed me off that that I got into it with this or that this guy just blindly thought that it was greedy corporations like, man, come on. And the thing that pissed me off about that the most was that this guy was in his like 60s or at least his 50s, a rough 50s, maybe a pretty decent 70s. So an older guy, old enough to know better. If this had come out of the mouth of like a 15 year old, a high school kid who's probably not even going to notice anyways. But if it had or a college student, I'd be like, all right, you're just you don't know better. That's that's OK. But that was out of somebody that should definitely know better. Oh, those greedy corporations. Come on, man. What are you doing? No, it's not greedy corporations. Jeez. <laughs> yes, there are greedy corporations. Sure, they exist. Yes, people want to make money. But I, I, I might have this wrong. But when I learned it, if this is accurate, it, actually, I'm just going to see if, uh, McDonald's. Because I heard that the McDonald's CEO, somebody posted this on Twitter. They said, the Mc, did you know that the McDonald's CEO makes $10 million? What in the world does he need with all that money? I thought, $10 million for the CEO of McDonald's? That is fucking nothing. That's insane. That's so little money for being the CEO of McDonald's? I don't know if that's accurate, but I'm looking it up right now. McDonald's CEO salary. Uh, Chris received a, a huge raise last year from, let's see, pandemic, bum, bum, bum. What does it say here? Then with McDonald's, I think there's also probably some, some stock compensations and, and plans like that involved. So it's probably like a uh, hard number to, to get, but like uh, all in all, it should be more. <laughs> yeah, like right, right here, this is from 2021. It says McDonald's CEO Chris Kemczewski received more than $10.8 in compensation last year. That's so little money. That's so little for being the CEO of McDonald's, one of the most well-known brands in the world. Like, I, I don't know how much it should be, but that's not a greedy corporation. And the McDonald's that I go to, everybody's happy. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, the, the customer service is off the charts. Or they smile. They're like, thank you. I, I, 
I know McDonald's gets a bad rap and has ever since that Morgan Spurlock came out with that documentary, Super Size Me. And admittedly, it's not great food. I'm not going to come out here and say that it is. But if you want a clean bathroom and you want a coffee that tastes the same everywhere you go, like McDonald's is doing a lot of things right. I mean, there's a reason that they are the biggest name when it comes to fast food. I, in and out, and I'm not sitting here saying that you should eat fast food. I'm just saying that if you want to eat fast food and you like a good brand, McDonald's is hard to beat. I, I can understand why uh, Warren Buffett's got stock in McDonald's. It, it's a pretty cool company. <laughs> it makes me smile when I pass by one. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just I'm a little kid, but it, I, I don't hate McDonald's. I, I can't. I, I, it's an American company. I like them. I like them. A small fun fact. Uh, I started my investing journey after I got out of ETFs and stuff like that with, uh, with individual stocks. And McDonald's was the first stock I ever bought. Mm. Uh, and uh, I loved it. And uh, I mean, like 100 bucks or something like that hey. with, with it. And uh, I loved it a lot. So I, I always have a sympathy for McDonald's. And I usually, like, I've been not there probably for like two months, but usually, like, uh, in, on average, I'm probably like there to eat 10, 10 times a year or something like that. Mm. Uh, and especially when you're on the road and you're busy, then then it's really nice. You just go in there. You know it's quick. Yep. You know it's good. You're not getting disappointed. You know you get something in your stomach. Uh, and the brand is really good. But the thing with the price is it's also really interesting. Um, the, I always ask when someone's like, oh, it's a greedy corporation. I'm like, okay, are those greedy corporations have monopolies? Because without the monopolies, you cannot raise prices without getting hit. Like if there are two companies doing the same thing and one is just raising the prices uh, and they are the same quality or similar quality, then they will, of course, flock to the other. Co- like consumer are not stupid and just buy the, the, the higher price tag mm-hmm. uh, for nothing, especially with all the internet and, and, and videos going on and, and shitting on each other. Um, when there's no monopoly, uh, they are not raising prices because they want to. They they raising prices because they have to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I imagine if you look at it through the lens of a socialist or a communist, and you're like, well, look, if the if the CEO made only five hundred thousand dollars, then you could put more money to this and this, and every McDonald's employee could get a raise of half a cent. Oh boy, yeah, I guess I guess so. Is that gonna do anything for any? I, I don't know how many stores and uh, McDonald's stores there are. I'm sure with a little bit of math, we could figure it out. But I'm guessing that if the CEO of McDonald's went down to a salary of, let's just go all the way down to $100,000. I don't think that all of the employees across the McDonald's entire brand is are getting more than like a two cent raise. Maybe, maybe it's not, it's, it's definitely not $5. It's, it's, it's not enough money for all of the probably millions of workers at McDonald's to all get a sun $10 raise and go, Oh, here we go. I've, I've ascended to the, the upper middle class. Oh, oh, now I can buy the home. Now I can buy the 20 acre ranch. Now I'm set. Here we go. Thank you, Mr. CEO, you rich, greedy money bags. Finally, you got an altruistic bone in your body and now we're all living on high street. Thank you, McDonald's. No, <laughs> no. I just pull, I just pulled it up. Uh, McDonald's apparently has two million employees. Okay, two million. Yeah, so two million employees. If the guy went down to a hundred, so let's say he made zero dollars. That's ten million dollars for two million. If it's not, yeah, that they're not getting. That's five euros for uh, five dollars for e- each right. Uh, employee, right? Right, five, five, five euros, five bucks. Like, it's not that that it would be nice, but then everybody would acclimate to that new expense that, that that money. Let's say that they're all at let's say they're at ten dollars an hour, an hour on average, or let's say it's they're at five bucks an hour on average. There are many places in the U.S. where they're making like fifteen, even twenty dollars an hour, depending on the shift and 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 whatever. Like there's a, the, the one that McDonald's. I often see now hiring starting at eighteen fifty an hour. I think maybe it's up to nineteen fifty an hour. But I, I'm in the Pacific Northwest and we have various labor laws. But let, let's say it's five dollars an hour. Let's say it doubles the McDonald's employees. It still isn't going to make them go from living in an apartment to buying a home. Doubling that, in, it's not enough to have that much of an impact. If the CEO went from ten million to zero dollars overnight, 
it would be nice for a little while, but it would feel like a fancy big bonus. And then you might upgrade your apartment. You might make do uh, do a few changes or something, but it, it's not. It, yeah. And it, it, it's per year. You know, like, like if he makes, uh, when you spread that oh, right. uh, five, a uh, five dollars yeah. per, per employee, that's a, not, not per hour. It's like right. per year you get five, uh, five dollars more like that's, that's, yeah. uh, it just does not make sense. Right. Yeah. I wasn't even, th- I was thinking it was, yeah, an hourly. <laughs> yeah. You're right. It would, it would be, it wouldn't be doubling there. It would be, it really would be like pennies. If it were, or uh, it would be like plus zero 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 one percent or something yeah. like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the big greedy CEO is ruining everyone's lives. <laughs> you do some real simple, like five year old math, and you realize how stupid that is. Yeah, uh, definitely. And it's it's so easy. Like I I did not knew how many employees. Like it, it's it's a really quick uh, Google search, and it just sh- shows up. Yeah. Um. I, like only uh, like when you search, like you have to search with the stores because without the stores, it's just two hundred thousand employees. Uh, but with the stores, it's like a, a lot more. Um. But we already are really with the progress with the time, mm. uh, and and I think we set our appointment till ten, and it's now ten at my time. Uh, so let's uh, let's wrap it up. Let's ha- come to our end routine um before we come to the end routine i have usually one question that i ask my guest but i get in the past a uh, few i almost got almost the same answer mm. uh, and the answer was always family so i want to change up that uh, last question so we get different answers what was the question um, I, I, i'm just curious um what <clears throat> are you currently passionate about besides bitcoin Oh, and my intention with the question was so we can learn from each other from Bitcoiners um, outside of Bitcoin. Okay, that was my intention. Yeah, but my most answer would have been family. This. That's that's not what I would use the word. I'm not passionate about family. I love my family, but I'm not. That's a weird answer for. Okay, M- most like uh, I think every second answer was oh family, and this is where most my st- uh, time is spent. Uh, uh, it, it's like and they are like. Add its family, sports, or some instrument. Hmm. Okay, the instrument would be the closest thing that I would I would say. My answer would have been writing. That's the the the, the number one storytelling is the number one thing that I, I care about. A- after family, yes, I care about my family and I love my family, but that that writing is my passion. But what's your new question? My new question is what when what can we learn from you besides Bitcoin? No, I guess writing. Yeah, I, I've written some stuff and I'm working on a book right now. It has nothing to do with Bitcoin. There is some, a few things in there that deal with money, I, I guess, tangentially. It's not really not about that. It's, it's a, I don't even know where the idea for the story came from, but it's a, um, <clears throat> a light fantasy novel, meaning that the, the fan, there's no magic in it. There might be at some point. I don't know. There's no magic in it. I'm 80,000 words into it. So to put that into perspective, it's a little bit longer than Harry Potter. Harry Potter was 72,000, 73,000 words long. So currently it's a little bit longer than that. I think it'll end at about 110, 120 words long. Uh, and I'd like to try and get it published. I think there is the there's a it's blanking on it, but I've talked to the guy through the Orange Pill app. He does publish the publishing and i think he's only thus far published bitcoin books but i asked him if he'd be interested in p- publishing other books a book by a bitcoiner that has nothing to do with bitcoin and at the time he said yes he would be so i'm i look to pursue that and then after i'm done with this i'm going to be writing something that i think would appeal to bitcoiners the book that i'm currently reading i, I ideally would appeal to people of, of many walks of life because uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with Bitcoin. The monetary system is there's gold and silver and it's like a fantasy story. But the next thing I'm going to write is going to be, I'll I'll just, I'll tell you where I'm taking inspiration from. I'm taking inspiration from Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrugged. So if you like long, multiple page monologues, it's going to have that. Characters, basically voicing my opinions through a character it's going to have a lot of that so if you're like i just want a story to be a story i don't want to hear the fucking author's thoughts well this book won't be for you it's going to be a lot of that it's going to break the fourth wall so i will talk directly to the reader so it'll be sort of like an essay it's going to have a clear story in it too the story inspiration is going to come from things like metal gear solid that not great civil war movie i have my own take on what a civil war might look like and uh stephen king's the stand 
um, it's going to be a, an amalgamation of so many of the different things that I like. It's going to do weird shit. It'll break the fourth wall. It'll have things that don't follow the laws of physics, but it will have a clear story in it. And it will deal with Bitcoin. And that, that'll be... I was going to have inspiration from like R- Mist, the video game, Riven. It's going to be a funky one. Nice. Looking forward to that. Really cool. Then we come to our last question to the actual end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next <clears throat> guest actually is. Mm. Uh, and the question that you got from the previous guest was, what is your favorite aspect of Bitcoin culture? Well, okay. I like it when people are super toxic. And I like it even more when they have a face to their toxicity. Anybody can hide behind a pseudonym or be anonymous and be toxic. But honestly, one of the biggest reasons I got into Bitcoin was because of Saifedean Amos on Lex Friedman and being just no shits given Saifedean, calling shitcoiners shitcoiners, being aggressive, being abrasive. I like that a lot. And I wish... There was more of people being called out. I know there were some people calling out Breedlove with all of that nonsense that happened, but I I like that. And so I um yeah, that 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 is something that I like a lot in, in Bitcoin. <laughs> I think I never had a guest on that said I like the toxicity in Bitcoin. I wish there was more of and, it. And- and, and I like that I had so, finally someone on because uh, the toxicity in Bitcoin was the thing that prevented me to go into shitcoin and in, to go into this Celsius uh, weird things. Mm. So like the, the toxicity of Bitcoin, especially on Bitcoin Twitter, um, saved me a lot of money. And you, you can say what you want, but uh, it definitely saved me money. Yeah, there's an overlap there with like the the two way the the Second Amendment gun, gun community. There are good guns and there are trash guns that will hurt you because they have they're prone to breaking. And the gun community is not shy about that. It's like fuck this company, they're doing stupid stuff. Do not support them. This is a good company over here. I like that kind of attitude. Just just raw truth. And uh, okay, so now I'm supposed to come up with a question for the next guest. Yeah, uh, I, I usually do it offline. Like uh, you can take oh, like okay. uh, even if you want like can take a few hours to think about no, it. No, I have one. Uh, but if you have one, you can uh, give it us right now. Yeah. What is something... Okay, this is, this is my question for them. Is What is a personal health failing that you wish you did more of? Wish you walked more, got out in the sun more, brushed your teeth regularly, what, whatever. What is something that you fail to do and you recognize that in yourself? What, what's preventing you from doing that? And what is one suggestion that you would make to somebody else to, to overcome that? So if it is you want to lift more weights and you think that that would be a good thing or you'd like to drink more water and you're aware of this failing in yourself, what is your advice to yourself and then other people that might also have that failing? But nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's just a personal maintenance question. It's amazing. Uh, I just like wrote it down. So I, I remember without, <laughs> without reverting the video. Um, uh, and uh, I li- don't limit the, the questions. Like I uh, intentionally don't give any like, oh, it should be a Bitcoin question. Oh, it should not be a Bitcoin question. Like mm. I don't, I don't want to put anything um, because there are so many interesting questions. And I maybe even think about like, releasing like an article with the most interesting questions and and the answers to it or something like that because the the questions are really cool uh and sometimes the the answers are even better to that Mm. uh and i mean there are also like really boring questions or questions that almost make no sense (laughs) um (laughs) but but there's there's everything in there and Sometimes a question that did not make sense for me or was boring for me brought up a really interesting uh, answer. So like the, it, it's the, there's all to it, and sometimes an interesting question brings up a boring answer. Like the, there's everything in there, um, but the interesting stuff is because I do it daily. I do it so much, and you're my 172nd guest, and I just do it half a year now. Mm. Um, there's a lot of content 
that I can sift through. And when I pick like the, the 20 highlights, uh, they will be really great. Yeah, you so could go I'm, through I'm and do like a quarterly thing where you just go use OBS or however it is that you record. And you could just go through each of your videos, clip that section. And so each, it just, you could just make a shit ton of shorts where it just, you could clip it up where it's uh, less than a minute. It goes, the question was, question. And then the person goes, oh, that, okay. And then they answer it and just bam, 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 bam. That, that, that'd be some easy content right there. I have a lot of content and I have to <laughs> repurpose them better. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> but yeah, uh, before, before I let you go, uh, where can people find you? Where can people ask you questions and, and, and read, listen, and watch your stuff? Uh, let's see. There's three main places. If you go to Twitter, my handle is, thankfully, I have a, a, an uncommon name. And so my Twitter handle is my name. It is at Delio Pera, D-E-L-I-O-P-E-R-A. No funky kick, just my name. That's it. If you want to, that's a good place to find me there. There's a link to my YouTube channel, which has less than a hundred subscribers. And that I don't expect that to change all that much unless you like that toxicity that I talked about that you're going to get a fuck ton of that on my channel. I do not hold my, my goal with that is to be the most raw unfiltered version. No fucks given. Come and ban me YouTube. I don't give a fuck. That is my goal with that. So if you want somebody that is not being PC, you want somebody that is just saying whatever he wants to say on YouTube about and it, it, it all pertains to Bitcoin. <laughs> there you go. I try to release one a week. Schedule is intermittent. I don't give a shit. I'm not trying to make money. I'm not trying to do anything with it. Other, it, It's therapy for myself. That is first and foremost what it is. And then you can also find me on the Mining Disrupt channel. They are a mining centric channel. I post the, the thing there. Uh, I, I have a video from them every Monday and that, that is way more clean cut. Just talking about the news of the, of the week. Amazing. Then, uh, yeah. Thank you, Del, for being on and for everyone else. Thank you for, for joining us today. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.